let's cover some stretching flexibility with the focus on breathing. I've got a mat, foam roller, and the box, no springs. So we're gonna start, we're gonna move to the foam roller in a moment, but what I wanna do is get ourselves set up. So I'm gonna set a mat long at the front of the reformer. There you go. And I'm gonna sit the foam roller on the foot bar. There we go, good. Then we're gonna take, I wanna start with the carriage closed. <clears throat> And that's kind of kind of give us an idea of where we want to go. So I want the box aligned with roughly the shoulder rest. I'm going to start with a couple options. So with the legs uh, slightly wider, and you will need to check your position of your box based on your reformer. So I need to be able to flex forward and back up. So this is a translation, this specific one I do with the uh, on the trapeze table i'm pointing at it because it's right off camera the trapeze table there's some really great things you can do if you have that but this is wonderful to teach people some rolling down and they've got the the shoulder rest and the carriage to help facilitate stability so i can do some rolling down all the way and push the reformer up with a lot uh, less difficulty. Depending on where you're at, if you've got the reformers on the floor, you can do this on a moon box, if you know what that is, the small little box, it's like a quarter this size. So there's, there's some really great options. So when I talk about breathing, I want you to know, and I will say this as much as possible, breathing is a tool, not a rule. So if you've been taught breathing is really specific, only inhale here, only exhale there. I want you to look at the option that it may be different um, depending on tightnesses in some students or yourself, injuries, or simply my breath isn't going into a certain place and I need to perhaps use the inhalation to open something up versus the exhalation to create stability. And let me just explain that with this simple forward flexion. So when I'm up on a box, the great thing is my hamstrings and the degree of hip flexion is a lot less. So I'm gonna have much greater range of motion in a stretch. Also remember when you close a chain or you support a limb, which my right arm is supported versus just doing it without, I'm much more comfortable with it, especially if I'm a newer student. So I'm going to simply stack my spine. Now here is my focus and I'll go very slow. I want to move the carriage to the end with as much hip flexion as possible. Depending on my range of motion that day, I'm gonna go there and then I'm done moving from the hips. I wanna really prevent what I call old lady or grandma back. I really wanna to try to find elongation through the skull, flexion, from the lower back. Now that I've got that really great stretch and the support, I can extend the spine up and lengthen. So if you're doing this along with me, I want you to try these different breathing techniques and see what feels best for you. So I'm going to inhale to prepare for my first, exhale to stretch. Inhale to stack, exhale to stretch. Now I'm gonna reverse and I'm going to experience the breathing in my body and see what feels best for me. I don't always tell my students to do it specifically one way. I actually offer them different breathing. I said, let's do it a couple inhalations on the flexion and a couple exhalations on the flexion. So for me, I've got scoliosis. I've got some spine damage from disc herniations years ago. And so sometimes the inhalation on the flexion actually stretches, actually opens up the area of injury and challenges where I'm breathing. So when I hold my corset tight or engage, let's say, 
I'm going to costal breathe, meaning I'm going to rib breathe. So if I'm sitting up nice and tall and I'm going to inhale as I move forward into my ribs, exhale up. Now that may be counterintuitive to what you've been taught, but you're going to notice two things. One, if I have a damage in my spine, it's going to inhibit and restrict my range of motion. It's also going to really facilitate expansion in my lower back where it is I need to stretch as long as I'm keeping my core engaged and I'm breathing through my ribs. So I'll do it again. Lengthening up first, axial elongation, lats, pecs, and abs are supported whether I'm open chain or closed chain on my right arm. Engage, lift that navel up. Inhale. Exhale. Now I want you to really pay attention when I inhale where my body stops in relationship to the frame. And where it stops when I exhale. You're going to notice a difference. I'm much more restricted and I will always try to hammer home when you have finished exhaling or inhaling, stop your movement. Don't hold your breath and keep moving. If the breathing stops, the movement stops. Now, we all have different, different ways we were trained, different ways we have our belief in what's best. What I wanna do in this breathing segment is get you to understand that you can experience different breathing. And when we do something with no springs, such as what we're doing today, starting here on the box, you're going to really feel the ability to develop different techniques to teach movement as opposed to staying within the confinements of your original teacher training program. So let's, let's experience breathing again. So I'm going to, so if I were just to say, here's our hug a tree position or our front rowing position, we're just doing it single arm with this nice stability of this. So big inhale to prepare. Exhale for five. Noticing I'm closing my chain on both arms. Stability. And three. And two. And one. Reversing. One more. Now you may or may not have noticed your movement was either restricted or increased depending on the two types of breathing. Experience it in everything you do. Offer it to your students to try an inhalation here or an exhalation there and see if they like that different breathing options. There is a roll down series I'll do before I go short box because I'm going to show you the long box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start my shoulder organized and I'm, I'm doing a slight turnout. So if I need to move slightly out to get more wide on my knees, two options or two reasons why I'm doing this. One, when I press the leg out in onto the frame, to the side of the frame, I'm stable pelvis. And with my hand on here, I'm stable torso. So I'm going to just probably put my hand here. We'll see where it moves. Organize the shoulder. Big inhale to prepare. Exhale as I roll my sit bones forward, rolling back. Big inhale again. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Adding rotation. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, and last one, getting a little further on the roll down, so there's some straight leg version, you can abduct the hips too, if you have the higher reformer that I do, it's really great for teaching stability, 
in a lot of the uh, exercises. You can add rotation and like a saw. The wonderful thing about adding this saw is my thumb on the shoulder rest as I rotate out can press, the arm press in to help stable and get a really great stretch. So this thigh pressing against it, if you can't get under, you can always bend the knee if you wanna do this saw variation and rotate, come up, press. So it's really quite limitless what you can program in this sitting position. When you're with a more higher level student and you want to do a teaser variation, you can take the hand off, bring the hand on, roll to your max, and press up. So play around with those different programs. I'm gonna actually bring it farther forward so I can get all the way down and up. And teaser is quite my nemesis with my scoliosis. So anytime I can find an assist to do this, it's great. Now, because this is a, this is a full 50 minute, 50 minute, 50 minute class. I want you to make sure you experience those on both sides. So let's go ahead and take the box to the other side. Push the carriage open so you can kind of get it in the same spot or roughly in the same spot. And let's just start sitting bones at the edge, gluteal fold at the edge of the box. Let's do legs straight and let's do forward flexion. Inhale, lift for five. Exhale, flex for five. Two. Three. Four. And five. Let's switch our breathing. Inhale, forward. for two, three, four, and five. Scoot my box back just a tiny bit. I was just hitting the frame on the back. Let's go ahead and do left knee soft and bent, right leg out. Let's just do that saw version. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, saw for five of those. Just you can kind of feel it on both sides. And two more. Last one. So sniff breath, I've talked about the sniff breath in a few different segments. Some of the breathing exercises or breathing tutorials I like to do, the sniff breath helps me find costal rib breathing. It really helps to lift that navel up, keep the corset tight. So try some breathing where you inhale through your mouth and try some when you inhale through your nose and see how, if you can feel the difference of how the sniff breath lifts everything up from the ribs and prevents a belly breathing. Because we want to make sure when we're doing any stabilization exercises of the, of the core and lower back, that we're not inhaling into our tummy. So let's say we're doing a plank series, toes on the bar, hands on the shoulder rest, like control front. And we're inhaling into our tummy on that. We've lost all our stability in our core. So finding that sniff breath, the costal breathing, is really going to help facilitate stability here. So make sure you give those a try. 
So let's go ahead and do some frog turned out, hug a tree position, and then just do, I'm gonna scoot a little bit away so I can press that knee into the bed and the frog high heel turn out. And let's do some little rollbacks. Inhale, stack it up, back onto the sit bones. Exhale, roll those sit bones forward as we stretch back. Challenging yourself, trying to see how far you can go with that stable shoulder on that shoulder rest. And two. And one. And we might as well try a few teasers. So let's bring the box forward a little bit more. Make sure that you can roll all the way down and back up for five. Letting go, taking the arms back, back up, and sit up. Let's do a couple more. And last one. Good. So those are some wonderful ways to play around with programming. Let's do a short box. Short box can be done a little closer to the front. And the reason for that is you can do some really great stretches uh, with a hand on the carriage or here. So I'm going to show you a nice little quarter turn side lateral flexion. <clears throat> so we're going to want to do this with, let's do five inhales, five exhales on the bend. So get yourself positioned, arm is up, rotate your torso. So that's where that thumb is going to kind of press into that shoulder rest. Inhale on the side bend, exhale, stack it up. Two, get a really great stretch with that sniff breath. Three, four. Now let's change our breath. Which really requires a lot more spine length versus bending and collapsing into the side with that exhale. Excellent. So you can do a full turn out. You can take the arm and you can start by rotating and pulling the carriage, taking the hand behind and twisting the other way, handing it off and twist. So when I twist, I'm putting my hand on the carriage, pulling it out to help facilitate rotation. My sacrum, my tailbone is anchored. So it goes here and then I twist. Now I'm pulling on the shoulder rest my sacrum is still really tight up against the frame, so I can't move my pelvis. Because a lot of the times when we're doing rotational stretches, we're truly not stretching our spine in rotation because we don't have a stable pelvis. So this is one of the great ways to push yourself up there, get yourself set up. In your leg position, I've done it where I've straddled the box here, hand it off, and then back and back. So you can play around with your leg positioning. It's completely up to you. For some reason today, this just felt nice being side on it. So whether the leg is straight or the knee is bent, you can go from lateral flexion, hand it off, rotation, rotation, and side bend. If you want to do it even, uh, sacrum is up against it, All right, hand it off, rotate, back, 
hand is on the show, the the bed, so I'm really even with the movement. And this feels amazing. So let's go ahead and try those on the other side. I'm just gonna step right through. Have a seat, let's start with side bending. So sacrum is up, I've got one leg in a frog position or a turned out pigeon position and the other leg extended out. I'm going to quarter turn for this first one so I'm angled so I can easily access that shoulder rest. And let's do five inhales on the side bend. And four. Three, keep that shoulder organized. Stack that spine. Let's do two more. And one. Changing our breath. Really maintaining spine length on the exhale. Very easy to collapse in. So really feel the stretch of that skull when you side bend. For three more. Two. I'm rotating away from the shoulder rest a little bit more as an option. And then rotate. Uh, let's do the handoff. Starting with the hand on the shoulder rest and go ahead and rotate. Rotate. Boy, did I need this today. Really think your skull is going up a barbershop pole. So you're really getting that length. And I'm going to show you the even version where both legs are straight, hips abducted, but up against shoulder rest, starting with a rotation to the springs, handing it off, hand on the carriage, and rotate the other direction. You can do some exercises as I showed you facing back with the shoulder rest. If you want to do the turned out version we showed you earlier and you're running the program into some stretches forward, you can also hold on to the edge as you start teaching some roll downs. I'm going to go very slow and I'm going to turn out high heel shoe position and my hands are thinking I'm in that hug a tree and I'm going to roll down. I'm gonna slowly lower my elbow, really getting myself controlled, and then back up, and then continue to press. I'm gonna slide my sit bones a little bit more forward on the box. I felt like I didn't have enough sacrum room. So nice big inhale to prepare. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale and then back up. So there are some really great options for you, both long box or short box with the uh, box up against the shoulder rest, doing some different breathing techniques, stretching techniques. Play with those and it's wonderful if you've looked at any of my flows that have the boxes on. And I talk about in the flows, adding some flows together. Put together a flow with the no springs, uh, rotational and lateral flexion breathing techniques in the beginning, throw some springs on and then move into the more advanced exercises. So we're gonna move on to some foam roller. So I'm gonna sit this on the floor uh, long. And what I wanna talk about is when we're on the floor, and we're on the foam roller, some people might have some challenges getting onto the floor. 
So by putting the foam roller on the long box, it allows people to not be so afraid to get up and down. That's where this came about. And then quite honestly, I love to put it in with this stuff. So I've got it to where it's touching the frame. It's even on both sides. And I'm just gonna start by getting myself into this position. So I'm at the base, probably the base of my upper back. I don't wanna be on my floating ribs and I'm just gonna stretch over it. Now this would be an example of exhalation on the extension that's gonna facilitate stability. So let's inhale to prepare. Exhale, feeling that navel pull up stretching. Now what I wanna prevent is movement of the foam roller towards my lower back. If the foam roller moves towards my lower back, it's gonna compress and I wanna feel length. So I've got some glute activation, some navel lift. As I exhale, I'm trying to go stretch over the foam roller as opposed to just getting that foam roller to roll towards me. Now I'm gonna slightly move it. That's the one thing about having it up against the frame too. It gives it a lot more stability for students that are, are afraid of it moving. Now, if you have a student that is afraid of it moving, you can also prop it in the back with something, like a wedge of some sort, or maybe sometimes I'll take, I, I have them in my studio, some like 30, 50 pound dumbbells, and I'll put them up against them so they know it's not going anywhere and they feel really secure. So let's go ahead and add a hip bridge. I'm gonna do a little wider on my feet, turned out just for extra stability. Inhale to prepare, exhale, engage my glutes, engage my abdominals, and lift my hips. Trying to keep a nice tripod on my feet so I'm not rolling in or out. And I just want to take a nice big inhale to prepare and exhale as I stretch for five, four, three, two, one. Hold the stretch, take the right hand off, keep the left hand behind, and do a little lateral flexion to the left, and then stretch over for five tiny little stretches, four, Three, two, and one. Hand back behind the head. Come back to center. Left arm off. Stretch over. Laterally flex to the right. And stretch over for five, four, three, two, and one. Feels really good. Back to center. Go ahead and slowly press yourself up. Roll that towards your lower back to help you up. Now you can do this sitting on the carriage with the carriage pushed out with no springs. I've done this tutorial, the, the same spine stretches on the carriage. So whether you're doing it on the floor, flowing it in, or you just want your students to feel a little different um, position, whether it's on the reformer with no springs or on the box, kind of play around. So I'm going to get, this is another exercise that a lot of people don't like doing on the floor, but on here, it's not as bad. All right. So imagine being in this position on the floor. This one feels great. So two things I'm getting is a really great spine stretch, letting go, getting over it, but I'm also getting that added benefit of smashing uh, and massaging my side. So I'm gonna use a little bit more advanced technique and please keep one hand on the foam roller for students that need the help. If not, take both arms out, stretch, get a nice stretch and lift. Now my lift is coming from my ribs reaching that way, not from my ribs pulling this way. So instead of pulling the top ribs to the hip, which I see way too often, which is compressive, 
I want to get that great stretch on my waist, get that stretch, and try to maintain it when I lift up so it's a reach away for five. Reach away for four. Inhaling on the lower, exhale on the raise for three, two, one. Now let's make it a little easier to show you another option and let's inhale on the way down. Just had to remember what we did. I'm gonna move it up a tiny bit more so I can get a little bit different position on my lat. So let's inhale down. Exhale up. And again, same rule applies, reaching that rib for two, three, four, five. Let's try that on the other side. I've still got the foam roller up against the, the, the frame and let's go ahead for inhale to prepare or let's inhale on the way down I'm going to move it tiny bit higher I want to make sure and you can kind of see whether the foam roller is moving I want to make sure my foam roller isn't moving there we go I was just a little bit too low on my lat so inhale up exhale down Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, two more. One more. Hand behind the head, hand on the foam roller. I'm gonna lower it a little bit more, or raise it rather, a little bit more towards my armpit. And inhale on the way down, exhale up for five, four, three, two, and one. Now let's say that that absolutely kills you on your lat, pad the roller. Grab a pad. If you have the Pilates chair pad, you can put that over. Anything that kind of gives you a little bit more cushion. Uh, they do have foam rollers that are soft, but I prefer the harder ones. But if you're very sensitive, please pad that. So we're going to now do a little bit. Let's do an IT. This is another one that's typically done on the floor. And it's very, very odd to be on the floor with your IT. So I can just start here with fairly low level. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna, or, boy, I'm getting my higher and lower is lower towards the knee, sitting higher on the foam roller, and I'm gonna get from my hip halfway through my thigh to start with. Keep that shoulder organized, and let's just go up and down for five. This one, because you're not on the floor, I find that myself and my students can take this a little bit more, a little bit longer too, because it's a very odd position to be down. It's a lot of load on the shoulder. This tends to take some of that away. I'm gonna go even lower towards the knee. If I want to take the leg up, I can, but for today, I'm just gonna massage a little lower and keep one foot grounded. Noticing I'm keeping one hand on the foam roller just so I can be sure it's not going to shoot out. So I'm going to get a, even low, closer to the knee. Starting a little bit farther at the edge and roll. And you'll want to try moving it from high to low, low to high. So I'm gonna go cup, maybe five rocks back and forth, and then I'm gonna lower it down, slide down, five rocks back and forth, and lower it down, five rocks back and forth. If I feel a spot that's nearly making me wanna hurl, 
I might want to just hold on to it. If I really can take it and take both legs up and rock back and forth, that's where I'm going to go to. So play around with those different options. Let's do the other side. So let's just start uh, high and just do a few rolls, mid thigh, back up to hip. I'm going to go a tiny bit lower. There we go. Making sure that you're doing your best to keep your core activated. Remember, you can always take the leg off and push with the arm and get more of a dynamic movement. I'm going to now go almost to center thigh. Um, I'm going to take the leg forward because I feel that I, right, my IT to quad on this side really has some uh, much needed attention. So you can play around with a foot position to work a little bit more posterior or a little bit more anterior on that side hip, side thigh. Now let's take it down and then take high on the knee or low on the knee and just roll five, four, three, two, one. Let's slide down a tiny bit and let's do five. Little rolls back and forth. Three, two, one. Slide it down even more. I have not done this for a while and I'm telling you, this is killing me. This is uh, my right hip I injured in a skiing accident. So let's slide down even more, a couple more. It um, needs a little bit more TLC and I've been neglecting my ITs. There's so much to do with uh, movement and exercise and Pilates that sometimes the stuff we don't like to do, we can really shelf it. So oof, three, four, Five. All right, let's slide it down. So there's a few different foam rolling techniques you can do on the box on the floor. Doesn't matter where it is. Remember, always prop it if you need to make the student more comfortable that they're afraid of rolling out. Because anytime a, a student, whether they exhibit fear verbally or you just see tension in their body or apprehension, if they're afraid of going backwards, which believe it or not, a lot of people do in a, in a method class such as this, when I teach my method classes to my students, I teach them exactly the way I'm teaching you. Why well, I'm breaking it down, I'm taking the time, I'm letting them experience the movement versus them just getting a workout. And I'm gonna offer variations and I'm gonna let everybody know it's up to you to find something, a breathing technique or a propping or a variation that works best for you so you feel successful. Um, additionally, if a student or yourself feels uncomfortable going backwards, that neural tension is gonna inhibit your ability to relax and stretch your spine. So find something. And the other thing is, if the rigidity of the foam roller feels uncomfortable, it's gonna tense you too. That's where padding this is very, very helpful. Um, all right, let's go on. I want to do some stretches at the foot bar. So taking the foam roller, and let's simply kneel on it to start with. It doesn't matter whether you're holding onto the bar or forearms are on the extended platform, depending on what you have available. I am just starting right below the knee. And I'm just going to roll onto the shins, sitting down as I do that, rolling my knees through the cutout in the, the reformer, and then slowly pushing it back, lifting my hips back up. I'm going to even go a little bit farther away. And I'm going to put knees together to start, knees and feet, and let's do one roll down. That feels great. And then back. And let's take knees a little wider, maybe an inch or two apart, and then roll. 
all the way down to the foot and back up. And let's take them three to four inches apart and roll. Now we're going to take the right knee to the left knee, rotate, look over our shoulder, and roll. So basically, I'm getting the outer right shin, the tibia muscle. Let's go ahead and do one more. That pain feels so good. All right, now let's take the right knee all the way to the right. The left knee follows it. Look over our left shoulder and roll onto the left outer shin. For two, I'm going to adjust the foam roller away a little bit more because it kind of moves a little bit on its own. And one. Now, giving you the option for single, I'm going to put my right shin center and I'm going to put my left on top. And then I'm just going to put all my body weight. I'm going to look away from the camera so you can't see me wince. <clears throat> and back. I'm kidding. Yeah, but it is very uncomfortable. And as I mentioned before, pad this if you need to. Or do not do single legs. Stay with both knees on. Let's do one more. And then back. Ugh. Let's put left center. Right on top, so there's no weight on the right, and roll down your left, and back, and one more. Mm, 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 mm. I'm telling you, that is amazing. All right, so that's one option to play around with different shin. Um, I've done it where I've gone from a nice flow here and on and roll and back and here. So I want you, without me showing you, you know, flows using the foam roller, I want you to get creative and play around with some different options. Let's finish with the hamstrings. So this one, I like to hold onto the foot bar and I'm just going to roll first started on my sitting bones. Just kind of roll over my sit bones. I've got one knee bent and one leg straight. That knee is kind of going to block me as a safety mechanism so I can't roll off backwards and switch. Just getting that hamstring insertion right on the sit bones to massage. I'm rolling over the glutes and back. The reason why I like using the foot bar for this is when we're doing it hands-on, it's very uncomfortable, especially for tight shoulders. So this one, I really, I enjoy it a lot more than doing it the traditional version that we were taught. So now I'm going to go ahead and take both. I'm going to turn out a little bit, heels together into a frog, so my knees can kind of guide me, getting again just over the sit bones. And now let's go ahead and bring it a little bit more forward and then come back on. And then just, I'm going to hold there. That feels good for me. You can move farther away and hold to the foot bar here if that feels good. And forth and back. So I'm getting an amazing hamstring stretch and. I'm getting a great spine stretch. So this is similar to, you know, rowing front. For some reason, I've got the, the wide foot bar and my arms want to go out there today. So if you have the, uh, the larger foot bar, and I'm shooting my feet through the strap. So if I want, I can rest my heels or my calves into that strap just to give my hip flexors a little bit of rest and then come back out of it. Now I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna go back a little bit more and then come back up. Just kind of moving myself. I'm gonna take my feet. I'm gonna actually do hip subducted so I can get on a little different spot of that hamstring. Roll from the sitting bones, heels come down, abs engage, and roll off for five. 
Mm hmm. Wow. Who knew? Four. <clears throat> right there, coming back is what really gets me. <clears throat> Last three. <sighs> I'm going to internally rotate just to get on more of that medial hamstring. And then I'm going to externally rotate to go back internally rotate to come in and then switch external to come in internal to go back <clears throat> sorry about all the noises if you're experiencing them with me then i won't look and sound so bad all right so that can be done for more than just a couple minutes but i just wanted to show you those variations you can do working the shin you can also work the inner thigh. So this one is more of just kind of get on a spot and then just stretch. And then go a little higher. Maybe this far, we're gonna move it and stretch. Just weight bearing on that is an amazing stretch for that inner thigh. And I am sitting on my heel going a little higher each time do not go all the way in if it's painful I've had students before say that's just too sensitive for me so know your limitations and then just to, for time's sake I would go all the way back down but I realize we're running out of time and I have a couple more things to show you. So let's go ahead and get this inner thigh starting at the knee. <clears throat> and stretch. Roll it up. And stretch. Roll it up. And oh, there's a spot. <clears throat> Keep going up far as you can take let's do three more rolls on us get us all the way to the pubic bone two right. hopefully I can walk after this get up because I was really needing that so going over today's method class there is you will hear me say this ad nauseum there is so much you can do this with this reformer with proppings with variations if you've been taught the basics i really want you to think about experiencing different movements using the machine because this as example and i want to really hit home why this machine is great without springs. When you find different ways to use the carriage for stability, as in the rotation and forward flexion we did sitting on the box in the very, very beginning, that is gonna help students stabilize versus collapse, understanding when we go forward and we have one side of the body closed chain versus both sides open, it's also very smooth. It lets them feel the movement without having their spine with, let's say their core is not strong enough. It gives their spine stability or, or support when we're flexing or rotating because sometimes people will rotate and they're stuck. But if you have something and you start using the reformer to help facilitate different movements, the quality of education and understanding really goes up exponentially with those kind of teaching methods using the reformer. Now, it's not that I'm saying don't do any of the classical tr traditional exercises, but use some of the no springs exercises that I've shown you in this and other, other um, videos to help show the students that they can learn to move without, uh, without springs. And I use the Cadillac as a great example. The Cadillac has vertical lines and horizontal lines. So when you're lying down or sitting, 
you can actually see where you're going. I can tell somebody reach to that rail, that upright to the right or to the left. If you know the Cadillac, the trapeze table, or when they're rolling down, I can tell them, look at the track of the bar above you and make sure you're not going offline. So a lot of the times this will help give them a guide for movement. For me, as I mentioned earlier, I have scoliosis. I can tend to collapse on my right side. When I do this exercise, and this actually came about for a client of mine with scoliosis, she had structural life functional, but she was so afraid of flexing forward because it hurt her. And so her Pilates teacher, where she was going to in another city, stopped taking her to forward flexion, which was so important for her to get for that mobility. And again, if we have a student in pain, instead of saying, no, we're not going to do that, let's find a support way to do that. And so no springs adds a nice fluidity, a nice need for control for our fast movers and give support for our students that may need to feel where they're supposed to go and use this as a guide or assistance. Thanks for watching and be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions about what we went over today. I know I covered a lot and I want to continue in any of the method, uh, shorter clips, the intro clips, or the, um, the tutorial ones showing variations too. I wanna make sure that I always get the feedback necessary to help you grow and develop, whether it's in your personal practice or in your practice and your teaching skills. All right, thanks for watching.